Good morning to you. This top story right now as we come on the air, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden sending his thoughts to the president and first lady tweeting out just moments ago, Jill and I send our thoughts to President Trump and first lady Melania Trump for a swift recovery. This as we're learning this morning that they tested positive for coronavirus. They say they pray for their health and safety. That tweet, of course, coming after the breaking news that the president and first lady have tested positive for coronavirus. Yeah, he confirmed it late last night in a tweet. He is now undergoing quarantine. Uh, the, the first lady as well tweeting uh, just uh, uh, less than an hour after the president tweeted about it. And this just in from CBS News Washington correspondents regarding Trump and Hope Hicks testing positive on Wednesday. She says the White House knew Hicks tested positive on Wednesday night. But the president still held a fundraiser yesterday and, of course, late last night, uh, confirming that he did test positive. So we're learning more about the timeline of the president coming down with coronavirus. Yeah, of course, the president tweeting last night at 7.45 p.m. that Hope Hicks had tested positive. And then just two hours later, he sent out a tweet saying that him and the first lady tested positive. So Evan Irani is tracking the story for us. Of course, the markets feeling it as well, the financial markets. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and send it over to Evan this morning. Uh, Evan, what else do you have for us? Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, financial markets definitely seeing a hit. Dow futures are down about 350 points right now, so still waiting the opening uh, of those markets. We also did just hear from Joe Biden. He tweeted this morning, Jill and I send our thoughts to President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump for a swift recovery. We will continue to pray for the health and safety of the president and his family. We were awaiting uh, any word from Joe Biden. It is expected that now Joe Biden will receive a test uh, simply because he was at that debate just a few days ago with the president, but really strict safety measures did ensure that they didn't make much contact. Still important that he get tested nonetheless. Now, the news that we heard of Trump contracting COVID-19 as well as Melania Trump, that news came just uh, about, uh, it came just hours ago, really. Late last night for us here on the West Coast, early this morning on the East Coast. Now, uh, Trump was first to announce that news via Twitter. He was also on Fox News last night after Hope Hicks had, Hope Hicks had gotten that positive uh, confirmation and this is what he had to say on Fox News. She tested positive, and I just went out with a test. I'll see what, you know, because we spent a lot of time, and the first lady just went out with a test also. So whether we quarantine or whether we have it, I, I don't know. And then just a few short hours after that interview, this tweet confirmed that both his and Melania Trump's positive cases had come in. The tweet said in part, quote, we will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately and we will get through this together. The White House also released a statement that added the president takes the health and safety of himself and everyone who works in support of him and the American people very seriously. Now, Trump and the first lady will quarantine now in the White House, forcing the campaign to be put on pause or at least adjust to a more virtual presence. This comes just days after Trump and Biden participated in their first debate where those rules said they couldn't shake hands and they would stay more than six feet apart. There is also a debate coming up just 13 days from now that could have huge impacts. We do not know if Trump will be participating in that debate as that uh, period where he should be quarantined is expected to be about 10 to 14 days. So they may need to adjust the date of that. Uh, we again heard from Biden just recently wishing them the best, but we also heard from the White House physician saying that they are in good spirits and Trump will continue the duties of the presidency from the White House while quarantined. We also heard from Melania Trump. She said she and Trump are feeling good, and that is, of course, good news. However, Trump is 74 years old. That puts him at the at-risk category, uh, according to the CDC. Uh, Melania Trump is 50 years old, so not quite as high risk, but still a very dangerous situation for both Melania Trump and President Trump. Now, uh, Vice President Pence and Kamala Harris are expected to uh, participate in a debate on Tuesday. Neither of them have tested positive for COVID-19. So, of course, uh, that is good news to keep them separate. And uh, we're just expecting to hear from uh, the White House physician or the White House as to whether or not Trump or Melania Trump are feeling any symptoms of the virus. That's kind of the latest that we're awaiting. Uh, but still, nonetheless, the world reacts Acting to this, Dow markets down, our futures down uh, before the markets even open up. So we're still awaiting to see how much that actually impacts uh, the markets going forward. I'll send things back to you, Stella and Eric.
Okay, Evan, thank you. And we are 32 days away from election, 13 days until the second debate. The president is in quarantine. We're learning this morning that the campaign rally in Sanford, Florida has been postponed. Supporters had already begun arriving for the event, but now according to the president's campaign website, Trump will talk to them online. The president also scheduled to hold a rally in Gainesville on October 5th, and he had in-person stops planned for Georgia and Arizona for next week. But as we know, he's going to be in quarantine for two weeks now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting see what happens with the next debate here that was supposed to be happening on the 15th that's less than two weeks away and of course as you know quarantine usually lasts between 10 and 14 days so we'll keep you posted when we get those developments labor department has issued its september jobs report showing just 661,000 positions were added last month the pace of gains has drastically slowed pointing toward a protracted period of fragile recovery here however the unemployment level did improve slightly dropping even further from 8.4 percent to 7.9 percent here this morning. Here in San Diego, two dozen students at West Hills High School in Santee are being told to self-quarantine. A staff member at the school tested positive for COVID-19, and the principal sent out a letter to parents alerting them of the possible exposure. The students affected will have to switch back to distance learning for at least two weeks. This comes just days after Grossmont Union High School District resumed in-person learning. Now to a closer look at the coronavirus numbers across our county. Officials confirming 305 new cases out of more than 11,000 tests. That's a positive rate of 3%. 11 of new cases and four probable cases are connected to San Diego State University. Nine new deaths brings that total to 792. Two new community outbreaks were also reported. It brings the total to 29 over the last week, which is high. The goal is to be under 7. Our other big story here locally, the heat, it just keeps on going as we're on October 2nd here. Another hot day in store here, Netta. Yeah, unfortunately, not really the cool down that I'm sure a lot of people are hoping for for today. Triple digits still in our forecast. For now, this is a gorgeous view, a live shot uh, right along the Embarcadero. You can see there's a little bit of fog off in the distance uh, right over the water. So Coronado, downtown, some of you uh, waking up to that patchy fog. But other than that, it's really clear across San Diego County. In fact, a lot of you may be waking up to a big bright light uh, maybe woke you up before your alarm clock so let's show you that that's the harvest moon we're talking about big bright full moon out there san miguel's camera giving us this glimpse before that sun comes up uh, before things get you know washed out out there here's a look at some of the temperatures the records that we broke yesterday downtown reached 97 degrees oceanside 87 chula vista 91 quite a few records broken expect a few more records for today as well right now 68 now 62 El Cajon, downtown upper 60s. So overall, fairly comfortable start to the day, but we still have this excessive heat warning until 8 o'clock tonight for these inland communities. The coastline, you're not going to experience as much of that heat. That advisory has been expired for you. There's a bit of an onshore flow coming in, but look at these numbers. That's still very warm. We should be in the mid 70s for this time of year at our beaches. Mid 80s to some low 90s possible for today. So that is a little break from yesterday's heat along the water. But look at these inland numbers. 103 in Ramona, 100 for Poway, 102 for El Cajon. So you can see why that excessive heat warning is in place. Here are some potential records we could see broken yet again, El Cajon and Ramona. Stella. Netta, thank you. And this morning, lifeguards are keeping a close eye on our coast after a number of shark sightings. We have some amazing video of Chopper 8 shot. This was yesterday showing just how close some sharks got to surfers off of our coast. This one that didn't seem to even know there was a shark nearby. News ace Teresa Sardina joining us live from Torrey Pines. I think we spotted about 13 sharks. Eek, Teresa. <laughs> I know, that's pretty cool video. And I know, you know, it's very common to see baby sharks, stingrays, and leopard sharks. But when we hear about great white sharks, it is very thrilling. So we had the chopper eight up yesterday and also San Diego police helicopter. And yeah, they spotted 12 to 13 great white sharks. So take a look at this video. Police confirm this helicopter spotted close to 13 white great white sharks within half a mile of the beach. At least one shark seen getting very close to one surfer on his board. The man was unaware and there was no contact. Lifeguards and San Diego police helicopter made announcements and signs were posted about the sharks and the potential dangers. This attracted a lot of attention on the beach and Babe Valero and her family kept a close eye on them, especially after beachgoers were talking to her nearby and they saw a couple of sharks. 
They said they spotted them in the surf, but they were only like this big. But that's probably sitting on the sand. They were this big. <laughs> As you get closer, they're probably more like this big. We didn't see any sharks or anything. Nobody seemed to even bother about it. Everybody's swimming and having a good time. Well, they have no fear. Just taking a look at that video. You may want to stay close to the shoreline, but I don't blame them, Stella and Eric. I mean, the weather's, the weather's so beautiful and the water is about 68 degrees. I'll send it back to you. Already looks nice out there, even at 611, doesn't it? All right, thanks, Teresa. Time now for your morning rush. Playgrounds in the city of La Mesa reopening just in time for the weekend. For all you parents and kids have been anxiously awaiting this. The city says it will fully reopen 289 playgrounds by tomorrow. Guests ages two and up will have to wear a face covering. No eating or drinking allowed at the playgrounds. Washing or sanitizing hands uh, needs to get happen before and after visitors can uh, go on the playground equipment. They're also being urged to socially distance from others there. The city of Carlsbad also getting ready to reopen playgrounds today. The city will have frequent cleanings and signs will be up indicating maximum occupancy on play structures. Well, it comes down to this Padres fans win today in advance. About time they woke up, right? <laughs> I mean, this is the Padres team we're used to seeing, Slam Diego style. Yes, the Friars came back to win a big one against the St. Louis Cardinals. 2-2 Two -two pitch. This one ripped to left field and gone in a hurry. And that one's launched to left field. They go back to back. And you punch De Leon. And this one is yanked deep to left towards the pole. Off the bricks and another home run for San Diego. Somebody hitting a long home run and having fun. Tatis, he's going to lead Sports Center. He's done it again. Another home run, and the Padres add to their advantage. I seem to think that Kerry Wood may drill him with a fastball in the ribs. Deep center field, Bader at the fence. Gone again. It's a two home run game for Will Myers. Rips it to first, handled by Hosmer. He'll take it to the bag, and we'll get a game three. Pa Look at that. When you get like uh, eight of your runs from just pure power home runs, that's Slam Diego style. That was just so much to, to watch. Totally. By the way, uh, game three starting this afternoon at 4.08, our lucky time, Stella, at Petco Park. The winner is going to take on the Dodgers in the next round. But I, th I think they've got their bat mojo back. What do you think? Uh, they have to. You know what I mean? And they prove that they can win. And we're going to get another W today. Like you said, at 4.08 seems to be the lucky time. Must so we'll win. take it. Yep. We will take it. Uh, let's go ahead and check in with Jenny now for a look at our roads. How's it looking? Uh, no luck here. No, no luck here. I, I, up to the north, there's a crash that's causing some big delays. But first, take a peek at the entire county. It kind of looks quiet, right? No big issues until you get way over here to the 15, almost towards Rainbow. If you're going to be heading southbound right before that exit to the 76, right over here, single lane is blocked. There is one crash. Trying to get some details on if anybody was hurt or just how major it is. Major backups, though, that's what you're dealing with. So as I zoom in even further on the map here, you can see you're down to about 18 miles an hour. And that delay stretches miles back all the way to Rainbow. So Rainbow, as you continue all the way south uh, until you hit the 76. When you, once you continue southbound past the 76, your travel times are fine. Everything else to the north, Oceanside, Encinitas, Poway, no issues there. Down to the south, it's the Silver Strand. So 32 miles an hour on average. Everything else is quiet. No major crashes. Stella. Okay, Jenny, thank you. Still to come, developments continue to pour in as President Trump and First Lady Melania testing positive for coronavirus. We're hearing from uh, VP, former VP uh, Joe Biden, who is uh, sending his thoughts to the First Lady and the President. Also, we're learning that Vice President Mike Pence and the Second Lady have tested negative for COVID-19. We're going to have more details on the follow, including the timeline of when the President may have gotten coronavirus, all coming up here after a break.